there were a few things on the first report that were legitimate. Right. You know, this window isn't sealed properly, blah, blah, blah. They already went in and fixed all that. They even put a new microwave in because one of the buttons on the microwave didn't work. Okay. Awesome. So they put a brand new microwave. I mean, the sellers were fine doing whatever was like a working condition right. issue. Real estate agent man. Right, they were willing to work with Right, it. but don't tell me that you're not buying this house unless there's a new roof on it when the roof is less than 10 years old without a single leak or history of leaks. Right. I, I approach every inspection as though I'm, again, trying to provide confidence to the buyer so that they know exactly what they're getting into. And it, from my perspective, like I was doing it for my brother or a family member, you know, these are the things I want you to know about, FYI. Right. These are the things that are an issue or a concern that need to be addressed right now yeah uh so there's a there's obviously a wide swath of territory that's covered by that right but what no matter what even if it's something that is uh you know of higher importance than gfcis i always try to communicate that in a non-alarming way you know so that it's not instant red flags end of the road or end of the world you know hit the brakes you know we don't want to we don't ever want to do that i don't think any inspector does i mean it's just one of the most important decisions people make at any one time in life and it's a huge investment, you know. It's it's a big chunk of change that they're putting it out on something. So we, yeah. my goal is to make people confident in moving forward with their decision, right? With so, the inspection. So you know, uh, you're you're generous saying that you don't think that any inspector does. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not convinced. All okay. right. I have this report. You what a segue. So I have this report. I'm covering up the name. Okay. But I have this very <laughs> thick report from a house that I had just listed recently that went through inspections. I did not represent the buyer. Okay. And the agent was from out of town and the agent asked me for recommendations and I gave okay. them two recommendations. Yours was one of them. Well, they did you. not call you or my other recommendation. And they called somebody who apparently uh, they felt comfortable with, but mm -hmm. that person was not available. So they sent somebody to inspect this house that had been licensed for two months. Got in, it. In their early 20s, uh, previous career was a, a bartender. Got it. So not, as far as I can tell, a lot of life experience to right. help them, not a lot of license experience to help them. And they botched this inspection so bad. I mean, they called out the 1974 telephone wiring box on the side of the house is being critical that a licensed electrician needed to come out check it out and right away check it out and fix it and hook <laughs> it up properly i don't i don't mean to laugh at i i know where you're coming from i don't mean to laugh at the inspector i mean everybody starts out at new things all yes. throughout their life but yeah that's not something that you'd that you'd want to really you know run up the flagpole is a big deal and there were multiple issues with it with this inspection the big one was that the roof was less than 10 years old okay and this person called it out as being at the end of its life and the the results of this report scared the buyer so much that she canceled the contract which put her in breach of contract okay. she had a ten thousand dollar deposit on this house that she is not going to get back the sellers are quite upset by this okay. whole process. You know, not my fault, right? Right. Uh, they're not upset with me, but they're upset with the fact that this inspector came in, created this panic list right. with, with no foundation to it, and the seller or the buyer bought into it and was so freaked out that this house is in such bad shape. Now, I got a backup offer on it. Okay, we already got it under contract. They did their inspections. Everything's fine. Everything's okay. You right. know, there were a few things on the first report that were legitimate. Right. You know, this window isn't sealed properly, blah, blah, blah. They already went in and fixed all that. They even put a new microwave in because one of the buttons on the microwave didn't work. So they put a brand new microwave. I mean, the sellers were fine doing whatever was like a working condition right, issue. Right, right. They were willing to work with it. Right, you. but don't tell me that you're not buying this house unless there's a new roof on it when the roof is less than 10 years old without a single leak or history of leaks. Right. And I'm hoping that this part of the conversation will also help the listener to to slow down and evaluate the logic in the inspection report okay. and be open to conversations about how well maybe that really isn't a working condition issue right it's pretty bad when somebody is so freaked out that they go into breach of contract and lose 10 grand and they loved the house right 
before that inspection report, they loved the right. house. They were in, right. Oh, my goodness. So that is so not my buyer. I mean, not my problem, but still my heart goes out to that person. Right. I mean, we had a backup offer. It was under contract the minute that other one was canceled. But that poor person who just went through all that. Yeah, I think until, especially as like a, a starting out or a fledgling inspector, I think until you have been through that situation once or twice and realize what it feels like when a, when a deal or a transaction gets put on hold or gets canceled, you don't fully appreciate how careful you need to be with some of your terminology and wording mm -hmm. and kind of, um, you know, holding some of your opinions back. It's not my house that I've someone's moving into you know it's right. it doesn't necessarily need to meet my standards which are quite high but right. as an inspector it's important for me to draw that line somewhere uh in you know in a realistic fashion so that i'm not causing undue stress and trauma and right. you know and canceling a deal in this case you got to be careful you know we need to be cognizant of of what what people's you know perception is always their reality so right. if i word something in a in a more pointed manner and that causes them to rethink their you know their decision making process that's it's you know kind of critical and important for yeah. me to keep that in mind or all inspectors to keep that in mind right i know that you didn't get into this business to scare people away from buying houses no <laughs> not at all and you know i mean nobody's house is perfect right i i sell a lot of new construction i've been on a lot of final walkthroughs for new builds <laughs> i mean yep. one of them with one of the major builders in the world uh the triple slider was actually cockeyed here, it was actually twisted God, and they fixed it with moldings. It's tricky. OK, yeah. so but it was it was a cockeyed door. Right. Triple slider it needs to be removed and and, right. and redone reinstalled. Yeah. You know? Or new 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 pieces and right parts all together. Yeah. yeah. A lot of times that, uh, you know, I hear people say they don't want to buy an older home because they want something brand new because it'll be in better condition. <laughs> No, it's not but always the case. <laughs> the first house we ever bought was a uh, was about 18 months old and it had two owners already. This was in another state. And I thought the same thing. It's going to be perfect. What yeah. I didn't realize is a house doesn't really get the full shakedown until a family lives there a year to two years. They discover what maybe wasn't quite as right as it should have been right. or what needs to be, you know, modified to be optimal in functioning right so honestly brand new houses as an inspector can be more complicated because all kinds of things could be you know we'll say hidden in the woodwork if you will yep. that you know contractors and, and builders i don't uh mean any offense towards them but they're running a business and when things don't go as they want or don't go as planned sometimes they have to make things work yeah and then part of our job uh even with a new construction build is trying to figure out what didn't go quite as planned there's a man who leads a life of danger showing houses day and night to strangers with every call he takes a chance that they are faced hoping they will buy a house tomorrow real estate Real estate.